Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, All In Crypto here and welcome back guys for what is going to be another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. I'm wishing you all a triumphant Tuesday. I'm hoping you guys survived April 1st, April Fool's Day. We didn't get uh, as well a response to our I'm selling everything joke as I thought uh, we would have yesterday. It seemed like actually um, I wasn't kind of the uh, a very original in that joke. I think a lot of other content creators and a lot of sort of other media outlets are also playing jokes. Uh, but it was a joke. You know, I am still bullish on the cryptocurrency space. We are experiencing quite a lot of volatility in crypto right now. Bitcoin is still kind of consolidating around that all-time high level set in 2021. Um, however, what I kind of want to do is give some clarity to things, you know, kind of understand or help to share my thoughts on exactly what's going on right now. Um, we are still a part in the cryptocurrency space, and this is where I think we differ from other channels. Most people have their kind of blinkers on and they just are crypto, crypto, crypto. And actually, a lot of the time, the um, explanation for what's going on, certainly on the short term in regards to crypto, comes from other markets because crypto finds itself now becoming more and more apart and more and more in sync with the broader sort of landscape of markets. So I'm going to be explaining sort of what took place yesterday, the fact that we're seeing a strong dollar on the back end of ISMs, what this means for risk more genuinely, generally, genuinely, generally, what's been happening with yields and kind of all correlate it together. Uh, and then of course, go over and take a look at the total two, which we still don't see anybody doing analysis on, which is the altcoin market. And of course, uh, Bitcoin, just to kind of zoom out and give people a little bit of perspective. And I think when people get shaken with the volatility, first of all, they've uh, misunderstood the space that they're getting into and the fact that volatility in the crypto space is part and parcel. It's very frequent that altcoins will move 10%. Now that works both to the up and the downside. And that is volatility that I think most people simply can't handle. And I see a lot of people making mistakes when it comes to crypto. Uh, first of all, I think the vast majority of people shouldn't even bother trying to trade it on the short time frames. And when you introduce leverage, it's like walking around in a candlelit room with dynamite. Okay, um, it just shouldn't do it, most people. Uh, and I think people get worried when you see the kind of volatility like we see because they don't have that bigger picture. They don't understand the broader trend, which is what we try and sort of drill in day in, day out here on the channel. We are now in an uptrend. We think the macro conditions and what's coming, the liquidity cycles, we've spoken about all this time and time again, which is why these daily market updates are important. It gives you this really well-rounded 360 opinion on the markets that doesn't just derive from the cryptocurrency space, um, but the cryptocurrency space confirms as an asset class. And that allows us to kind of mitigate the volatility that we see from an investment point of view. Um, because we understand the broader trend, we believe we're on the right side of it, uh, and we understand that volatility is part and parcel, uh, and actually we are still expecting that right shoulder to form in regards to the total too. So we've got a lot to cover. Uh, it's going to be quite a macro one, and I want to start off with what took place yesterday and, and, and the ramifications that this has for crypto, uh, and we'll relate this to the Dixie chart, which is the dollar chart, the dollar strength chart really, and, and, and the fact that what we saw yesterday was really strong ISM manufacturing, PMIs, and ISM manufacturing uh, prices. So this is the first time the actual PMIs came out over 50 since I think September 2022. And this is a really good sign for the US economy. Okay, and US economy data positive, dollar strong, the uh, lesser need for cutting rates, and the uh, leaning on risk, essentially through a strong dollar and strong yields. So we are bullish on the bond market, which is the adversary of yields. We'll, we'll factor all this in and bring it all to crypto. I know I lose people when I talk about this kind of macro stuff, but it's extremely relevant, certainly given the fact that uh, Bitcoin is, and the crypto space more broadly is kind of jolting a little bit here. And it has a lot to do with that strong dollar that's coming off the back end of ISM manufacturing. It's a really good barometer for the economy, which of course, in turn, this is from Michael Brown, uh, a UK kind of economist, I guess, ISM manufacturings make Powell and Waller's no rush to cuts line sound increasingly prudent. Yeah, so we still believe they're going to cut. 
but the perhaps expectations for cuts are getting somewhat rethought. You know, do they need to cut in an environment where we see really positive GDP? I think actually it was JP Morgan weighed in on GDP. This is from JP Morgan's flow desk. Uh, I believe a lot of this has come straight from Bloomberg Terminal, by the way. Um, they do not think equities require any cuts to perpetuate this bull market as this above trend GDP continues to translate to stronger than expected earnings and that combination will keep stocks bid. So what we're experiencing is just a little bit of a pullback. We also see along, along with PMIs, world business climate and shipping activities now on the rise. Remember, we've, we've been looking at global liquidity cycle and we think actually liquidity is going to come from a number of different elements. One of the big elements is going to be the Fed stepping back in and buying up the bond market. Um, so we'll relate that because bonds kind of went down. Bonds can be a barometer for risk broadly and yields went up being a kind of barometer for the dollar and its strength and, and the anti sort of um, risk category. So the, the, the PMIs have largely factored into the markets. You saw a very strong dollar yesterday. And of course, what that's in turn done is priced out or uh, making the markets rethink cuts and they're kind of it's kind of a less of a positive outlook, if you will, on rate cuts. So this is obviously May, the next meeting that we've got. Very likely there's going to be no cuts. That's been my opinion from the start. I've always thought people were premature going into 2024 in regards to the amount of cuts they thought we were going to get. Um, and then this, of course, is for June. So June was a lot higher. It's now at around about 56% that we're going to get a cut and around about 41% that they're going to leave it where they are. And the ISM data certainly supports that along with the strong GDP growth. However, JP Morgan timing and saying they don't think that and, and, and stocks, crypto, correlated in, in the form of risk, um, you know, they, they, you're not going to need cuts necessarily to continue this. Just like, look at the rally we've had thus far, it hasn't been on cuts. It's perhaps, you could say, been on the markets forward looking, the forward guidance of cuts, which is why we're getting that kind of readjustment on really strong ISM and, and big data. The really important um, data for me isn't necessarily ADPs that are going to be taking place uh, tomorrow, um, which is... You've got a lot of Fed speakers as well this week, but it's more non-farm payroll. So if we get that weaker than expected non-farm payroll, that's going to translate into the dollar. Now, remember, we have a broader thesis on the dollar that it's going to come down to the lower band of this channel that you've been in since 2008, which is really when they started adding to the balance sheet and we officially entered communism for another video. Um, but in the short term, the dollar has been persistently strong. Uh, and obviously, you can see I've drawn this. You can see where the dollar found support. You know, we did have that small head and shoulders for the dollar. That target was met up here and it's pulled back since found support on what was previous resistance and has gone on a bit of rally. I still believe the dollar is going to top. I still believe our broader thesis, which is going to allow risk to do well, is that the dollar comes down to the lower band here. And I think actually very supportive of that is forward guidance on where rates are and where they're going. So if we drop the Fed funds right in a nice Bitcoin orange, we think this is coming down. We think in turn that means yields come down or yields will be the driver of that. We're not in the higher rates camp. And that's going to see risk do well. Of course, bonds, which are bullish on, and that's going to see that global liquidity cycle play out. So we're covering lots of things here, but we're really trying to simplify it for the sake of the video. Um, if we look at the headwind to relate it to what's currently going on with Bitcoin right now, and we throw the Bitcoin chart on, we're going to throw another risk chart on as well. We'll look for the S&P, uh, which I believe is down here. So just quickly, because people, oh, again, put their crypto blinkers on and they forget what the fact that crypto is a part of a broader ecosystem of markets. Dollar up, risk down. Pivotal point here when the dollar rolled, that's when risk bottomed, okay? And the dollar's been in a downtrend. And I believe it's still in a downtrend until it gets to lower band here, which is going to see risk continue to do well. You can see risk down, or sorry, dollar down, risk did well. And look at the changing point here when risk kind of stalled somewhat on the back end of a strong dollar. When the dollar rolled, risk got rocking and rolling again. And since then, if we drop down, you can see, we'll take the spy off at this point, but just to show a general risk correlation. Since the dollar's been strong, Bitcoin's been stalling. So we need that dollar to, to roll. Obviously, yesterday you had the ISMs, which fueled this. And of course, fueled yields and put pressure on bonds, sort of saw them go down. You know, gilt's doing quite well in the UK. It's, it's a general theme. Um, however, and it's all a rate play really in market and crypto finds itself in that. However, I do think this is going to roll and you're going to see continuation. And I think that 
is very much confirmed in regards to what we're looking at technically for uh, crypto. So let's move away from all this. We've kind of explained. This is, in my opinion, the real explanation with why crypto is selling off to the degree that it's done. It's done very well. Arrest is, of course, warranted. Gold doing very well, actually, on the back end and continuing to climb higher. Remember, we're very bullish on gold. There's a concession of patterns here. You've got a head and shoulders. You've got a... Um, an inverse head and shoulders, you've got a big cup and handle, you've got bull flag. There's a, there's a lot of things going on with gold uh, and we do have that higher target. Um, Bitcoin is in an uptrend against gold. It's at a key level. Just to quickly bring this up, you can see where Bitcoin's currently sold off. This will fix itself, I believe, and actually form big continuation structure. Remember, we are bullish on Bitcoin and that, and it's important to zoom out, hasn't changed at all. You know, you can see we've got that 151K target you are just making your way on there and you're just consolidating around an all-time high. Very normal. But the probably most important chart for me is the total two. And I believe I've been showing you all this um, and you haven't been able to get a full full uh, breadth of it. But this is the total two. So this is the total market cap excluding Bitcoin. Very interesting video on Dogecoin yesterday and how Dogecoin could be a barometer for alt season, which I can fly by in just a second. But you can see you're pulling back here. As we were expecting, we we're expecting to form a right shoulder that is going to see the total market cap get to $3.7 trillion, which is over a 3x from where we currently are. More than that, it's like a 3.2x at this point. So this is just a very healthy pullback. Lots of altcoins. We've got targets for a lot of smaller altcoins. If we look at something like HBAR, for example, you know, this is what you do when you break a key level. You come back and you retest it and you consolidate before then starting a broader trend. But focusing on the total two, this is very healthy. No structure has been invalidated. There's no reason, in my opinion, to deviate from the path that you're on. And what you're getting right now, essentially, is just a readjusting on the macro kind of short-term outlook of things that is leaning on crypto that also ran into key levels of significance, but will likely sort itself out and, in my opinion, continue to go higher. Now, that is just my opinion. Um, some of the comments that I do see in the comment section from... Unfortunately, unfortunately it's not a vast amount of people do make me think there's a lot of people in crypto that perhaps shouldn't be in crypto um, because they don't understand the nature of the beast that they're dealing with and the volatility that comes hand in hand with it. You need to, this is why we focus on the bigger, broader plan, which we've not gone that much into. We've spoken about how the kind of levers of the markets are weighing on Bitcoin and crypto right now. And we've looked at the fact that we do think this sorts itself out. There's good and bad news in the ISM. Of course, that maybe lowers the expectation for rate cuts, but also shows a good economy, um, which is, Good. No recession here. We don't want a recession for markets. Um, and we want to find that sweet spot, that soft landing, which I would actually argue we're having right now. It doesn't mean that the crash doesn't come down the line, but I think as far as things are, are going, the crash that was prophesied by the bears, and we were on that crash camp in 2022 until we started looking at rates and the correlation between markets and rates and the fact that markets always go up on high rates and they go and put in new all-time highs when they go sideways. And, and that we've been accurate on that. Um, but there are some people in crypto. I think crypto is a very immature space. I think it breeds immaturity. Um, and I think it's a tough time for people that don't have a broader understanding of the markets and um, a plan, essentially, a road, a path. They don't understand the trend that they're in and the fact that volatility is a part and parcel of it. You're going to make life very difficult for yourself. Um, but generally, everything that we're looking at is A-OK. -okay. There's a bit of kind of... Uh, higher up market reasoning to why actually Bitcoin's selling off right now, despite that gold's doing well. Um, and we do think the dollar eventually does roll and come into fruition with our broader thesis on, on global liquidity, what's going to be driving that Fed, where rates are going, uh, and, and what in turn that's going to mean for risk that we have technical targets for, like the total two that we just looked at going to $3.7 trillion. That's not going to happen in environment rates go up uh, necessarily. Um, so that is really all I've got for you. We just wanted to kind of come out and, and just give our thoughts on what exactly is going on right now, what screws are being turned and what internally that means for crypto and give that kind of zoomed out approach. You know, for me personally, my portfolio can move a lot in a day. It's part and parcel of being in this space. Um, you know, the, the moves that I get in my portfolio on this volatility are substantial probably more than a lot of people could handle seeing that money go up and down. Uh, however, over time, you want it to, to, to go up and you want to ignore the kind of chop that you get in the middle. Remember, I do have a Patreon. We've opened the Patreon. There's only a few more spots left. And then we're going to cap it again. Um, and I did a far more in-depth update on everything. Um, but this is generally what's going on. 
Not really any cause for concern for me, but that is just my own opinion. Choose to do whatever you guys choose to do. It doesn't necessarily bother me whether anybody buys or sells crypto. Um, we're just here to report as a technical analyzer and somebody that's been in this space for a long time on what we see taking place. Uh, and we've kind of laid it out for you. So a bit of a leaning on risk, certainly crypto being the, the high, highest beta play on that. We do think this corrects itself. Very healthy in regards to Total 2 and, and, and the potential structure this is forming. Um, and yeah, on that note, guys, I am going to love and leave you guys and girls. Have a triumphant Tuesday and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next.